Is this the time to buy or sell the Spain ETF? So first off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So here is Spain. It's in Southern Europe. 32% from the 52-week low and 8-ish percent away from the highs. The ticker is EWP. Here is the Spanish uh, stock market, um, and we can go all the way back here, frankly, to 1996, actually. So uh, some decent amount of history here. Something that is very interesting since the global financial crisis is that Spain really developed an affinity for time cycles. The time cycles have been relatively tradable. Uh, good signals to go long and short. Uh, we are currently still a part of a declining time cycle. If we look at some of the preceding uh, declining um, time cycles, you see that they were protracted uh, with numerous um, rallies uh, before you had the ultimate low. Uh, of course, the tricky question is, you know, what is the status now for Spain? Uh, what is of a special Interest now is this indicator, so let me just draw it in. You have the red 200 week moving average, very, very big deal, and it's been a pretty solid resistance level. And we haven't tested it yet, but we are so close to testing that super resistance level. So it is, of course, possible to break through a resistance level, but it's about the context. The context now is that we have seen a strong rally since October, very strong, only a couple of weeks uh, with a bit of a break. And uh, yeah, let's quickly look here at the daily indicators, a very strong rally. The problem, however, is that we have seen that strong rally. When we look here at you know, the weekly RSI and the PPOs, they are not in extreme territory yet. However, they are elevated. And when you, on top of that, have this solid resistance level, you also frankly have the blue 100 week moving average as resistance. Going to the daily data points, then we do get into some treacherous territory. We are overbought on daily RSI. Recently, MACD was really high. Uh, the PPOs are also very elevated. Hence, this is not really a great context for the bulls to have like some super breakout. Uh, the previous time we tested this elevated RSI level, it was back here and that resulted in a pretty substantial pullback. So let's go to my notes. I write the following. So 200 VMA resistance. And let me just get it like this. I think yeah, we can also say that we are um, over bought RSI and we have it, especially here on the daily, it's pretty risky. I think I will give the technicals here a minus um, five in favor of the bears. Next is to look at the seasonality. So finally, the seasonality tool here to the right is working again. Let me just modify this a bit. So to the right here, you can see all of the data going back to 2003. January. So, so far in January, January we have a 5% gain. Uh, you see that that is definitively more on the bullish end of the spectrum. Uh, looking at January as a month, it is a bit messy. All of these numbers together add, uh, add up to a minus number. Uh, you can see here that February is especially weak. It, it, it's really been a bad uh, month for January, especially yeah, ever since 2007, really. So the current month is, in the context of already being up 5%, it's a bit of a risky month for the bulls, and the next month is not really that good. Looking here to the left, uh, the average over the last 10 years in red, 7 years in blue, 5 years in green, we do see that all the way into the 26th of January, uh, we usually see weakness, uh, seasonally speaking, for Spain. In this case, I will give minus 6 here to the bears. 
let's look at the fundamentals. So I am comparing the Spain ETF, EWP, against the FTSE Europe ETF, VGK is the ticker. So let's look at performance. Uh, there's no point really in looking at year-to-date performance. So let's look at the last year, minus 2.33% for Spain and minus 14% for a broader Europe ETF. So obviously Spain has massively outperformed the Europe ETF. Uh, when you look here at the beta, 0 0.95 versus 0 0.93, so relatively similar. Price earnings, 19 versus 17. So you could argue that Spain is overvalued versus uh, the broader European market. The yield is 3.25% versus 3.12 for broader Europe. And here are the holdings, 20 versus 1,341. So yeah, do you definitively get more diversification with VGK. Uh, so let's look here at the sector breakdown, finance, utilities are pretty big. Uh, in the Europe ETF, uh, yeah, it's pretty, yeah, more diversification, of course. Uh, finance, finance is on top there as well. Market cap breakdown, uh, country breakdown. When it comes to the fundamentals, I will give minus five to the bears. Let's look at relative performance. Long term, we have 59% uh, positive with S&P 500, 89% with VGK, the Europe ETF, and 62% positive with the, with the Euro slash US dollar uh, currency pair. Daily data points, 59% with S&P 500, 96% with VGK, and 92% with the dollar index. So what happens with the VGK is going to have a pretty substantial effect on Spain. Here is VGK. Uh, we have seen a uh, you know, protracted rally here. Uh, you could definitively make the case that this looks like uh, an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Shoulder, head, and a shoulder. That is a breakout, you know, bullish uh, pattern. Um, peaking out above here, the red 200 week moving average, which is, which is a bullish sign. Let's look at whether we are overbought or not. So getting into territory here on RSI that is a bit risky because if we go back here to uh, July 2021, you see that it is very common for this ETF to explore the lower region of RSI after having gone high. Uh, it usually rebounds, it usually has a substantial mean re reversion. So here you can see um, um, the seasonality here for the CTF, usually quite bearish into 26th of January. Uh, here to the right here, you do see that January in the context of already being up 5%, yeah, there's quite limited upside based on the history. Here is some uh, relative com performance comparison. Spain versus Europe. Um, we sort of have an inverse-ish head and shoulders, but the right shoulder here is lower than this one, which is not that bullish. So it's a fragile inverse head and shoulders pattern. Um, there's that. If you go here to the daily data points. Um, it's a bit noisy, so let's look a bit at, at the seasonality to make that the arbiter. So the seasonality here suggests weakness into later January, meaning that Spain has a tendency, tendency to underperform the Europe ETF. And especially here, if you look here at February here uh, to, to the right, uh, February usually is a month of underperformance for Spain. So in my notes here, I write, yeah, I give it minus six here to the bears for Spain. So we end up with minus 5.5. Uh, the 200 weekly moving average is a key resistance level and we are overbought on the daily data points, especially the RSI. So all in all, there is more reasons to be bearish than bullish uh, currently when it comes to Spain. So uh, we do have some time left. Um, so what I usually do when we have time left is that I look at the uh, components within the ETF. 
The issue in this case is that because of it being, you know, composed of Spanish stocks, very few of these are listed uh, on stock exchanges that anyone can trade on. So that is a bit of an issue in this case. Um, I, maybe, maybe Banco Santander, let me just Banco Santander. Um, I say, yes, yeah, so I think, yeah, it's this one. So this one can be analyzed. Yeah, basically the same issue uh, with Bank of Santander, uh, the red 200 week moving average and the uh, blue 100 week moving average key res resistance level. Seasonality here to the left, pretty, pretty bearish. To the right here, it's a bit messy. But given that we are already up 8% for the month of January, it puts us in a fragile uh, situation. Uh, when we look here at the fundamentals, price book ratio, it's it's not super high, but it's not really like screaming low either. Price to sales is a bit better. Price earnings, it's 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 on the lower end of the spectrum, two point seven percent yield, which is which is decent in terms of yield. Uh, so there are twenty one analysts with a one year price target. Minimum is 9% to the downside, average is 30% to the upside, highest is 72% to the upside. That's this, that that's decent. So looking long term here, here at this chart, we are definitively at, at a low level. Uh, so you could certainly make the case that there that there might be some upside here. But I don't like the context, you know, given that we have this super key resistance level, mediocre seasonality. Um it's not necessarily the ideal time to enter a position, but but some Bank of Santander here looks it's it's interesting. It's more potentially an issue when it comes to timing uh, of get, going bullish on on Bank of Santander. Of course, it could be a, a pair trade where you go like short the Spain ETF while you go long Bank of Santander. Okay, I I don't think there's that many. There's pretty few stocks here that are like, yeah, yeah. There's n there's not that many stocks or already, you know, from the get go, in the ETF. So yeah, let's look at other things. Yeah, so let's look at some other stock markets around the world. So let's look at the S and P five hundred. Yeah, so it's a bit noisy because we recently have seen a pullback. It's been a decent shorting opportunity related to the green fifty week moving average. Now. We are rebounding a bit, but we don't have a clean support on the weeklies. On the, on the dailies, it's also very messy. So that's the situation for the SPY, is that it, it, it's pretty messy. Uh, let's look here at the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones is definitively stronger. It's outperforming uh, the S&P substantially. Uh, let's look a bit here at the seasonality for the Dow Jones. Uh, so it usually is bearish into late January. To the right here, you do see that January, it's, it's a bit of a messy month, but uh, all of these numbers aggregated together, it ends up with a minus 13%. So yeah, that's the Dow Jones, that is America. And now let's have a bit of a look at China. So China has seen some very strong rally here, just a power, really powerful candlestick um, this week. Uh, so this is uh, definitively some action here, uh, notwithstanding, you know, the lockdowns uh, breakout above the 200 daily moving average. Yeah, seasonality here to the left is a bit bearish, also to the right here, given that we are up 10% for the month. Uh, the vast majority of months for January are lower than 10% gain. So for January, a lot of the historical expected gains have been made already for China. So yeah, we have looked at Spain. Uh, we also looked at Banco Santander and uh, looked at some of uh, yeah, so a bit at uh, at America and also China. Uh, the situation here in the market is that it's um, it's uh, be, there's been a lot of strong moves, and after very strong moves in a specific direction, you usually have uh, some mean reversion, which would mean a move in the opposite direction. Uh, one way to sort of hedge yourself against these kinds of uh, gyrations is to 
have bullish and also have bearish positions and how to get more of a balanced portfolio is something I discuss more on the website diamondarm.com and you can get like VIP access and access to a lot of very, very cool stuff. So whatever you do, do of course, in the market, have some stop level and um, look for and wait for opportunities. 